Now, what does this mean? What does that mean, right? Well, this is shorthand for two numbers. One of them is minus two, minus root three. Minus two, minus root three. And the other one is minus two, plus root three. That's what the plus or minus means. It's shorthand, because um, you guys know how famously lazy mathematicians are. We'd prefer to write that than all of this, but that's what it means, okay? <laughs> Okay, these are the solutions, okay? So now you can see why we had so much trouble before. You remember how we... You remember how we got quite good at guessing the pair of numbers, right? You're like, two and three, nailed it. Three and negative four, nailed it. You're never going to guess these because there, there are these square roots in there. Who would think of imagining those? Okay, but it really does work. Remember, we wanted them to add to this and multiply to this. Watch, another color. Here are my two answers down here. I'm gonna add them and see what happens. Uh, negative two, hey man, thanks. Okay, so I'm adding this pair of numbers, right? These guys are important. Um, if you think back all the way to when we did surds at the start of the year, I said these, this pair of numbers actually has an important name. They're related in an important way. It starts with a C. It was a long time ago. Though. Very good. These are called conjugates, okay? Now, conjugates match up. Conjugates match up because look. See how there's a minus root 3 and a plus root 3? What happens when you add them together? What happens? They, they cancel out, right? So you get left with this. Do you see that? Which just gives you negative 4. Now, we were expecting 4, right? We were expecting 4. But the reason why is we're actually adding up the solutions not the numbers that go in the factors. Do you see that? Look what happens if you add these guys up. What do you get? You get negative five. It's the opposite of this, okay? If you multiply them, you'd get six. Let's see what happens if we, do I have space? I do. Let's see what happens if we multiply. Uh, help me out, you're gonna have to help me. Because when you think of that pair of numbers, When you think of the pair of numbers two and three, you're not actually thinking of the solutions, which are these guys. You're thinking of the factors that give you solutions. They're actually opposites. Do you see that? It's because they're opposites that you get this being opposite, okay? However, with this, watch, it's really, really quite lovely, actually. Watch what happens when we expand. We know how to expand, okay? Negative two times negative two. Negative two times root three. Negative root 3 times negative 2. Negative root 3, positive root 3. But look, look what happens here in the middle. You see these guys again? Bam, bam. Oh, that's a, that's a minus, sorry. There, right? These thirds have cancelled. They've cancelled. Which leaves you with? Right there. Okay. All right. So, 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 let's tie this all up, okay? This method you just learned, completing the square, it's what you use when you cannot factorize. Like everyone looked at this and looked at this and you're like, I don't know, I don't know what to do, I can't think of something, all right? You can complete the square with any quadratic equation, whereas you can only factorize with some of them. I'm just going to wait for everyone's attention. Still waiting. Okay. If you haven't already, please make sure you emphasize this part here. 
half, and then square, because that's the key part of completing the square. I walked you through this, so now I want you to walk me through this. This is the question I gave you at the beginning. You couldn't solve it before, except for Leo. Now you can, okay? So, help me out. Have a look. What was the very first thing that I did to both sides? Yeah, I got rid of this number here. It wasn't helping me. It wasn't helping me factorize, so I subtracted it from both sides, okay? But then I did that step after which this whole process is named. I completed the square by adding something. What did I add? Three. You gotta do this process, right? I've got a half and then square. So what's half of this? One and a half. If you square that, your calculator should tell you that's two and a quarter, okay? So two and a quarter, I added it to the left, so... I better do it on the other side. Okay? So far, so good. Why did I do that? Why did I add this strange, awkward number? What did it allow me to do? I've now made a square. What is this square? Now, I didn't tell you much about how I did this, but I wonder if you've worked out how I know. I'll give you a clue. It starts with an X plus. What's this thing here going to be? Think about it, have a look. Yeah, yeah, you see how I went half and then square to get this number? If you want to think about this number, you just have to do the halving. That's all you had to do to go from there to there, which in this case was one and a half. These were ickier numbers, that's why I did that one. What's on the right hand side when you simplify that number? Five over four will do it, or a quarter. Five over four is fine, okay? I've made the square now, I've factorized it. What did I do with that at this point? What did I do? I don't have squares anymore because I took the square root of both sides. So that leaves me with x plus one and a half. What have I got on the right hand side? Just be careful, remember that weird thing that comes up. Very good, there's two numbers on the right hand side. Plus or minus the square root of five over four. Like so. I'm almost there now, have a look. What am I gonna to do to both sides? I'm gonna subtract that from both sides. That gives me this. And those are your answers, two of them, okay? Now I know it does look a bit, um, they're messy numbers, that's why I mistakenly, I should have written four there, it would have come out a bit neater. It's still the answer, by the way. Um, you can make this neater, I will point out. Uh, what I would probably do is put your, Irrational numbers hat on, your surds hat. Four, five over four, when you take the square root of that, we can simplify that, we can write that better. Can anyone see how I can write that a little bit better? Do you see that the four, the denominator is a square? Do you notice that? It's four, right? So I can write it as root five on two, because that's root four. Do you see that? I, this is the answer. You're done. But if you want it simpler, which we often do, you would do this. Okay? Um, I wrote minus one and a half as an improper fraction so that I could get these guys together. So here's my final answer. It's still a bit messy, but that's because thirds are messy. Okay? So there's our answer. <laughs>